Hello everyone, this is Nitpicky Nerd and today I want to talk about subspace communication in Star Trek and uh, this is one of those topics which has a whole bunch of inconsistencies and contradictions between the different Star Trek series and even between various episodes inside each series. It's one of those uh, things like uh, warp speed which they didn't really follow their own rules. Each episode kind of made its own rules depending on what was needed in the episode and so subspace communication was even more inconsistent than uh, the warp speed literally every episode made up its own rules. So for example one episode they would say it would take weeks for a transmission to reach the Federation and in the very next episode someone would have a live two-way conversation with someone in Starfleet headquarters. So obviously there is a bunch of contradictions now maybe we could explain it by saying that different regions of space allow for a different uh, travel time we can also use that to explain some of the warp inconsistencies. We could say that some regions of space uh, you move slower at warp than other regions Actually, this was pointed out uh, directly in a few episodes that because of different subspace phenomenons uh, in space, uh, it actually interferes with warp travel. So we can use that excuse to explain away a lot of the inconsistency in the travel time. There are different regions of space in which uh, warp travel is either faster or slower, even though they would still use the same number. So they would say warp 9, but if you travel in that slow region of space, your warp 9 will be like warp 2 in other places. So this is something that was never said on screen in any of the Star Trek shows, but it is a good explanation to explain away all the inconsistencies. It could also explain why Data always had to tell everybody how fast they can get somewhere. Like if uh, the warp travel was consistent, then uh, all Starfleet officers should be able to tell how fast they can get somewhere, because it's basically simple math, and yet they always ask Data or use the computer, so I guess it's much more complicated than just a standard speed because it also depends on the environmental conditions of the regions of space so it's possible they have to get all that information before they can determine the exact time they will reach somewhere so we can use that as an explanation and also the idea of warp highways can explain all those times in which a ship using normal warp engines was able to reach vast distances that it shouldn't be able to which obviously was the mistakes of the writers but this is kind of a neat way to solve that. So for example one episode in TNG we saw Professor Galen showing Picard uh, his uh, travel plans for the next few weeks and yet he showed him with his finger that he's planning to go halfway across the galaxy in just a few weeks. So presumably he would be using a warp highway of some sort and it's possible some regions have uh, permanent highways like that, that it's not something that which is uh, disappearing and appearing like a wormhole but rather a constant uh, route like that which uh, always remains in the same place. It can also be used to explain why the Federation is so big. Uh, in First Contact Picard said that the Federation is over 8000 light years across. So that seems pretty huge especially since they say it only has about 150 planets. So 8000 light years appears to be kind of big but maybe if there are a few highways inside the Federation itself maybe that could explain how come they have planets so far out. Also it can be used to explain how the Enterprise arrived in the center of the galaxy in Star Trek V. Maybe a warp highway existed at that time. So I guess we can use the same excuse to explain away the subspace communication contradictions. We can say that it all depends on where the ship is. Depending on how many interferences there are in that region of space, subspace uh, travel time can be very different. So if there is a clear uh, route in between the two places, then uh, they can contact each other with a strong connection uh, talking live even if uh, they are on a vast distance and in other places even if they are physically closer they might not be able to have a fast communication they might have to send a very strong signal pulse that would take days or weeks to arrive to its destination simply because there are a whole bunch of interferences on the way also it might depend on how advanced or how strong your communication system is Maybe advanced communicators or ones with enough power would be able to send a strong enough transmission that would reach faster. And so uh, I would say subspace is not like uh, the speed of light which is constant. So it's not uh, its equivalent in subspace which is a constant speed but rather it depends on all these factors. So it depends on the region of space that the ship is in, it depends on how strong your transmission is. And it might even depend on how much information you want to send. And so if you want to send a, a very small file of data, then it might be easier to send it to a, a bigger distance faster. 
compared to if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one chat with someone. By the way, this can also explain the issue of the holograms in Star Trek Discovery, which is one of my complaints about that show because it seems to contradict what we later see, but maybe it's because uh, the USS Discovery was much closer to Federation space, it's basically inside Federation space for most of the show, so maybe because it's so close they are able to send uh, a lot of information back and forth in lifetime, which allows for that holographic communication with people, but uh, if a ship is very far away in space, then it would not be able to send as much information, especially not in a live stream, and maybe that can be used to explain how come the Enterprise, when presumably it was very distant from the heart of the Federation, so maybe it was simply unable to send uh, strong enough signals with enough information to allow for uh, holographic chats with people, and that's why they relied on the more simple view screen, or even sent uh, text transmissions instead of visual ones, simply because they were so far away. So that can also explain some of those contradictions. We see in some episodes Picard has a live chat with someone, and other times he says uh, it might take uh, days or weeks for a transmission to even reach the Federation. So we can say it all depends on where exactly the ship is. Also there's the topic of subspace relay stations, which is something we saw in a few episodes, that Starfleet actually has a lot of small stations which uh, their only job is to relay a transmission. Uh, we saw a few subspace relay stations uh, in TNG and uh, a lot of times they said uh, they are unmanned, other times we see it has a very small crew, sometimes just two people, and its only job I imagine is to boost up the signal and maybe even to speed it up, and I imagine they would be mostly needed in those areas of space I mentioned uh, which don't allow for subspace transmissions to pass as quickly and as easily and with as much information, so that's probably the places in which they will have to put more subspace relay stations to make communication possible. And so that's why I think uh, this contradiction of how fast uh, subspace communication is can be explained with uh, everything I've said, so it all depends on the position of the ship, meaning not just how far it is, but also the region of space itself, because different regions allow for different travel time of subspace transmissions, and for different amount of information you can send in each transmission, and it also depends on how many subspace relay stations you have in that area, so in one area which has more subspace relay stations, you might be able to communicate faster compared to another in which you don't have that. And so I think uh, this explains that uh, little continuity problem which never really bugged me because of this, because I knew there can be a very easy explanation, and if there is a very easy way to explain something then I don't normally complain about it. And this is one example of such a thing which can be easily explained, and so I think I explained it in a satisfactory manner. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below, and we can discuss it in the comment section. And if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, please click the like button, click the notification bell if you don't want to miss my videos, and I will see you all next time. Bye bye.